Hello and welcome to Mighty Delicious Food. Today we're going to learn how to make chorizo. A lot of people have been asking where can I get chorizo and you know it's really hard to find even for me right now so I figured we can make it. It's easy. It really is easy. Um, the first thing we start with is ground pork. I use about a pound of ground pork. If you can't find ground pork you can take some pork cutlets, throw them in a food processor and it'll grind them up for you nicely. All right and then uh, dried peppers. Very important staple in Mexican cooking. I always keep dried peppers on hand. Uh, you can order them on Amazon, anywhere nowadays. So the first peppers we start with is I use two ancho peppers. They're really dried poblano peppers. I use four to five guajillo peppers are the ones that give that red flavor and nutty flavor to everything. And then I, uh, these are spicy. You don't have to use these. They're chiles de arbol and these are, these are, are really spicy. Okay, but I use five of those in mine. And I use three cloves of garlic. And I use some um, Mexican oregano, about a teaspoon of that. And then I use a third of a cup of apple cider vinegar. And salt and pepper, of course. I reconstitute the, the peppers in about uh, a cup of water, boil it, add the peppers to it, turn off the burner, let them sit there and soak until they get soft and pliable. I try to take out the seeds ahead of time, break them open, let the seeds out so you don't have to strain it afterwards. Uh, once it's um, they're reconstituted and they're soft and pliable, you reserve the liquid, liquid, don't toss it out. You put everything in a blender, you put your garlic, you put your peppers, your oregano, your spices, salt and pepper, everything in the blender and the vinegar, and you blend it all into a, a nice smooth paste. And you'll end up with something like this. See that, isn't that a beautiful color? And then, you just take that and we put it into the, um, the pork. You don't have to put all of it. Okay, and then I use my hands and mix it all in there, get it all in there. Make sure that it's all blended in there and every little piece of meat is coated with this. And you, it's very important that you have enough vinegar too. If you feel like it's not, you don't smell the vinegar, you can't really, you know, sense that there's enough, put more in there. It's okay, because it's gonna help with the curing of the meat. Okay, just get it all in there. See how it's getting that nice orangey color that we like with chorizo. And, the, and what you're gonna do is, once you get it all blended up, you're just gonna cover it loosely. Don't cover it tightly and because um, otherwise the meat will release liquid and then you'll have to drain the liquid off. So I just cover it loosely with a piece of plastic and then longer it sits in your refrigerator, the better it'll be. You need to let it sit in your fridge for at least 48 hours before you can cook it. And because you want all those flavors to get all in there and really incorporate into the meat. And there you have it, that's how you make chorizo. And now you can make all your dishes that require chorizo like that queso flamiado, uh, fundido that I made the other day. Um, I'll have to give you guys that recipe and show you how to make that. It was super delicious and I made bacon tortillas to go with it. So anyway, thanks again for joining me at My Delicious Food. And if you notice, I'm wearing my Cinco de Mayo t-shirt that I got from Cuckoo's Nest. They're having a great takeout menu and they're having uh, Patron Margaritas to go. So Patron Margarita kits to go. That sounds really fabulous. So and they're also selling these t-shirts, $10, $10 a piece. Here you go, see the back, don't be nice. Have to represent. All right, thanks. And as always, aprovecho.